Gail, take it away. Okay. Um, first, Surely we'll have people to, lining up at the mic soon. <laughs> with regard to uh, uh, Bruce's challenge, um, I think the way to reduce spending is not through provider payments, but to focus on capitation. I mean, that's actually the only way you know exactly what you'll spend at the end of the day because you have uh, all of the services covered per person, whereas when you're talking about uh, provider rates, you still have a volume intensity uh, challenge that may not come up. We can go into that. Okay, let me, I will do that. Can you hear me now? Okay, so it was, to me, I mean, this is just as an aside, not the uh, main issue, although I do want to uh, um, talk about something related to that uh, is uh, to the extent you really want to have control over the spending. Uh, it's not provider rates per se. Uh, it's capitation. That is uh, what you agree to spend for a whole package of services uh, to take care of somebody uh, because the problem with the provider rates is that you still have a volume intensity mix uh, that can get you at the uh, end of the day. So I would say we, we can go back, that's not uh, the most germane to the, this comment, but you started out with that challenge, so I figured I, I had a right to follow up. Um, the issue I heard in the time that uh, I was here, I missed the very beginning, uh, from a number of people, from a number of different strategies, um, had to do with the urgent need to find ways to blend the funding streams. Um, and I want to talk about this just for a minute because I think it is more conceptually feasible. Uh, it is very challenging because of jurisdictional control, uh, both in the Congress uh, and in the actual people responsible for the various uh, funding uh, streams. But relative to uh, some of what uh, we've talked about today, it seems an easier lift to imagine happening uh, than uh, some of the others. Um, uh, unlike Joanne in the beginning, I'm not going to uh, uh, try to reach you with uh, additional uh, passion uh, because I think this is a very complicated, serious problem that is going to require a series of steps uh, to fix uh, to the person who was uh, shouting, you need to talk to Seema Verma, that's all very nice, except most of the time it's actually not the CMS administrator uh, who can make the changes you want to make. Uh, it is much more likely to be a matter of changing law, not regulation, which is what uh, she controls, uh, or something about uh, jurisdiction. Uh, that leads me actually to a more serious point is uh, when you're advocating, people at this table know this because they've lived it, uh, you need to be very clear about who has the authority to make the change, if anyone does, uh, and what would it take uh, relative to the current status if you're actually going to feel like you have a chance uh, to make change happen. So it is a clear, uh, methodical way of saying Here's where we are and what's not getting met or what is extremely difficult to have happen. Uh, here are strategies that might be able uh, to ameliorate uh, the current problem. Here's who has the authority to make those changes. Uh, and here's what it would take either in terms of blending funding that exists, which I think is far more often the case, uh, than trying to add new funding, although good luck if you can get that. Uh, that always makes it... Um, a little easier. Uh, the question uh, to me is who gets control of this funding? How do we make those decisions? Uh, what kind of outcomes do we want to require? Uh, and what kind of reporting requirements uh, go with that? Um, I think that focus is much more likely to try to help us move in this very complicated world that is social services and medical services. Um, I heard some warnings were given this morning, I want to support them, about the danger of relying too much on the formal medical care system uh, to provide heavy social services 
if the medical system is in charge of the money. Putting them together is very important, but we need to understand most human nature is you will do what you are trained to do, and if what you are trained to do is to provide medical services, you can be pretty comfortable and uh, quite confident that you will get more medical services when you put them together. So it's not just the ability to be able to combine that funding, but making sure you're clear about who controls, what kind of requirements will go in terms of outcomes, uh, and what kind of um, uh, reporting requirements will, will go with that. I think if we could ever figure out a way to blend all the funding uh, sources that we have going on, we would be a long way to getting the funding we need. It is hellishly difficult to get accomplished. But I would just as soon see some of the passion thrown that way as just saying, we need to have more, give us more. If you can do that, that's just fine. Uh, but the others seem slightly more likely. Uh, you would just have to be very clear to explain what would need to happen in order to have this occur and who has the authority at various levels to make this happen and how can you try to put sufficient and adequate spotlights and pressure on those individuals or institutions to see if we can't have this change. So I'm, I think, by, uh, by nature, slightly less pessimistic than some of what we hear. Uh, I tell people frequently when you work in health policy, you have to take your very small occasional wins and gains and savor them. It's the nature of the beast. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, but it makes me think about that basic orientation uh, in this area. Uh, we do spend a lot of money. We just spend it in very squirrely ways. Seeing whether we can't figure out how to improve that would help solve this problem a whole lot easier than, I think, assuming you're just going to get a lot more money dropped in. Someday we have to figure out how we're going to make Medicare financially viable for the doubling of the population that the baby boomers uh, can put on it. There are a variety of ways. It's not magic. We just have to do it. We've been so talking about this problem uh, since at least I was around running Medicare in 1990. No surprise that we are where we are and we are going where we're going. All of those people were born and around and completely predictable uh, several decades ago. That's for sure.